So I'm out here in the garage, and uh, I got all these crankbaits uh, from GearBest, crazily enough, right? Um, didn't even know they really did the fishing stuff, but these are deep divers. Um, and these are kind of just, I don't know, some sort of minnow pattern. Anyway, <clears throat> they come like this, individually packaged with the hooks resting on the body. So the treble hook is resting on the body itself. And I kind of like that, how they sit in there. But I want to make some kind of hook retention. A lot of guys will, or anglers uh, will be unisex here because women fish too. But uh, they put rubber bands around here to keep those hooks together so they don't uh, catch each other. What I'm thinking is we could try and 3D print something that'll go over those and could go over any type of crankbait with this uh, I think these are like number four treble hooks so let's design something up and try and print it and see what happens alright so back in the house now I brought the crankbaits in to the house uh, so for instance all I'm trying to do here is just be able to put something right here on the crankbait so these two stay together and these hooks stick towards the body of the crankbait and I think I'll be able to get one design for both of these that allow that to happen so like something like this and like that put them on there uh, figure out a way to make that happen. Now I'm sure you've seen something similar to this. Uh, I'll show you on here. Um, I'm sure you've seen these types of deals there. Um, they work, but then your hook is still able to, to flop around and then they get caught on each other a little bit. So I'm thinking let's try and make it to where it goes, it bridges the whole thing and keeps them together so when you pull them out of the box, they're not they're not too crazy uh, stuck together. So uh, we're just going to jump into Tinkercad for this because I don't think it's going to be that difficult to do. I'm just going to take some basic measurements with some calipers. Going to be in millimeters just to make life easier. Um, all I'm going to do is probably measure the thickness of the hook itself which for this hook is going to be 0.7 millimeters so what I'm going to do is I'm going to model at 0.7 and I think that'll be just tight enough to keep it together and then we're going to span it out probably 70 millimeters so 0.7 uh, hole there we're going to go 70 millimeters long, and then we'll just kind of concave it in a little bit. And the reason we're going to concave it a little bit is so we can get up into those hooks as they rest in here. So let's try it. So what I'm going to do is start first is I'm just going to bring a box in. Um, I'm going to do 0. Point, not 0. 0.7, but 0. 0.7. That's going to be uh, what we cut out eventually. It's going to take a little bit, but that'll be what we cut out. So we got that set. And then we're going to need 70 millimeters. And we'll do 5 millimeters because we'll have 2.15 or something millimeters of material on either side of the cutout. So I'm just going to make this 5 millimeters wide. And I'm going to bring this out 70 millimeters. Then I'm just going to lay it on its side. Uh, well, we can keep it like that for now. What I want to do is I want to make this uh, more parabolic, right? I want to have it so it can fit onto the inside of a crankbait. Because um, most of the time crankbaits, unless they're like uh, surface or they're walk the dog or their stick baits or something they're straight across but for the majority of them they have a little dip in the belly so I'm gonna just add uh, this as a concave area but what we can do is we can either cut that off or we could just bring in one of these uh, shapes from Tinkercad already and this one's called the round roof 
So I'm just going to do that. So we could have either cut it from that or brought it in with this separate shape. And I'm just going to do that because it's already there for us. Why would we mess with it? So we can get rid of that one. So this one's still five millimeters. Now we have to think about how we want to be able to grab this thing. And I wouldn't mind having kind of like a almost like a detent where you could grab it a little bit easier with your hands. So what I'm going to try and do here is let's bring this back down to zero. So we can put this in. This is where our hooks are going to go. We can align this by selecting both of them. I'm going to put that right in the center. I'm going to bring this back. And then we can make this longer. We can make that the whole 70. So then, <clears throat> excuse me. So then we want to have this just up just a little bit. So I'm just going to bring that up like a one millimeter. So now this is where those hooks will kind of set in there and uh, hold themselves. So we can uh, group that together. Well, not align it, but we can group it. We can also align it with that tool. Um, but what I'm thinking is I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger. So something along the lines. Uh, we could use like a wedge or something for it, but uh, I don't know if we really really need to because we'll print it with this we'll print it with the center slot facing up because it'll be much easier than dealing with supports so all I'm going to do is we have this set to about five millimeters wide I think we'll probably do this like um, make it a little bit beefier right we'll do 10 millimeters wide and then that will also go 70 millimeters And we'll put this down like 10 millimeters is fine, I think. So then we can put this here and then we can lift this up. And this is kind of a little trick I like with Tinkercad because you can, uh, you can kind of have issues with certain blocks not binding together if you don't do it properly. So what I do is I just go up in here. I say, well, that red one ends at 10 millimeters so if i position this anything lower than 10 i'm good but i don't want to throw my tolerances off that much so what i'm going to do in here is i'm going to put 9.99 now it's it's off by minuscule amount for 3d printing it won't even matter but it is still under there so those two will um, group together without a problem so then i'll put that in there We'll align it one more time just to make sure. When it's gray, the alignment tools are gray, it means it's actually at the point that you would have it at. So I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna group those. So now we have one piece there. Now what I wanna do is I wanna add a little bit of, uh, I wanna add something that I can grab a hold of a little bit easier. So I'm just gonna come down here. I'm gonna probably do this number something like that I don't want it too aggressive uh, because the printer will have a hard time dealing with that but what it will be able to do just fine is something along along those lines I'm thinking so we will go off and we'll bring this and just a little bit there just a little bit here don't want a whole lot uh, of cut into it. Don't care that much. I think what I'll do is actually do it kind of like this almost, which I'm okay with to the point where yeah, that would be nice. I'm okay with that. Put it up like that ish. That doesn't look bad. So now I can move this just over enough until I see that uh, gray go away in the yellow. So right there, I know it's it's meeting at that mark. 
So then what I can do is pull this out for the length of it. And then I can duplicate. And then all I all I have to do is my uh, arrow keys. Arrow keys. And then I can increase my resolution down here in the lower right with the snap grid. I can turn that back off. And then I can just use my arrow keys again until it hits or it doesn't hit. All right. So now I know it's right there. And then I can just do this number and group those all together. And now have a nice little handle, I think, to grab it. All right, so let's uh, see if it works. I'll probably run off one on the ANET A8 real quick. Uh, I'll probably do it at, at 0.2 millimeters because whatever, it's fine. Um, and if I need to, I might do it at 0.1. But I think this should work well enough, uh, especially while out in the field or something. Just keep the tackle box a little bit nicer. So let's let her rip. So this wasn't really even worth a time lapse. So, I mean, it took less than a half an hour to print. So let's try it. All right, there it is. Hot off the presses, eh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, haven't even tried it. Don't know if it's going to work. This is what we're trying to prevent here. This is ridiculous. Come on now. I'm not even exaggerating this. This is just... Alright. <clears throat> so let's see. Might have had some some bleed over there to where it's going to be a problem. But I might have to clean it out quick. But I just wanted to try it first. Straight off the printer. Yep, not happening. I'm cutting myself with it. All right, I'm going to try and clean this out because I think, yep, had some bleed over there. What I mean by that is the filament there, really good on uh, this side, you can see, but then started coming together on that other side. So I'm just going to try and clean that out real quick, just with a pair of forceps just gonna run that down down the center of it just to open it up you know okay now let's try it let's try it with the bigger one so I don't stab myself before I know how to do these things but we're gonna keep it like that I'm gonna put the first first hook in Oh, and then I'm going to put the second hook in. Oh, it's like that. Like that. I like these crankbaits too, by the way. Um, they're pretty nice and they get, they got a rattle in them. I got these on flash sale for, uh, for, for about like 50 cents a piece. This one. And let's try it with the smaller one and see if this... Oh, I should have did that for you guys so you could see how... If it works very well. So you just put it on like that. All right, so then that can be in the tackle box uh, without hooking other ones, hopefully. Then when you're ready to fish it, you just pull it off. And then we go to a different one. See, that should work on that. Something like that. Yeah, I think that'll keep them from hanging up a lot less, you know. Yeah, so then when you're ready to fish it, just yank it off, put it on a different one. Pretty happy with that. So I'll throw this on Thingiverse. If you liked it, maybe uh, give a thumbs up, maybe subscribe. It's kind of what I do here, fishing-orientated 3D printing, practical prints mostly. Um, got a Discord server set up. I'm kind of using that as a community forum. Uh, I have it alerted to my phone and everything so you can 
hop on there, post something, and I'll see it eventually. I don't know how uh, actual Discord I'll be on there. Um, actually, just sitting there waiting for people. But there's a few different uh, rooms in there. You can set something up and talk and chat. Uh, yeah, Instagram, Twitter, all those things. I'll, I'll pop up a thing right now. Check them out. Uh, I post a lot of stuff on Instagram before it actually comes out on YouTube. So, yeah, check them all out if you want. Keep your amps up and your filament dry.